I started late doing picture books. I was 45 when my first book was published. I'd done other things before, but uh, I I'd always wanted to draw. The other things like writing stuff for the BBC were sort of accidental um, because I was married to a very good scriptwriter who taught me a lot. When Tom died, it saved me really because uh, you have this other thing to think about. I think if I didn't draw, I'd probably have taken to religion, but I haven't. When people um, put their own interpretations on your stories, the tiger who came to tea, yeah. does it make you giggle or does it annoy you? Oh, it makes me giggle. So, I, I mean, I read it every night for months to my son and started imagining that it was about sexual awakening and ethnic difference in <laughs> suburbia. And I'm, I'm reliably informed I'm, I'm wrong, but that was just what was going through my, my imagination. Will you, will you tell us what, what was at the base it, of the it, tiger? It's very boring. Before my son was born, there was only my daughter and myself. She was two going on three. And Tom, my husband, uh, was, I forget what film he was making, he was out a lot uh, with the uh, director, whereas normally he was at home writing. And so it felt a bit lonely. We wished somebody would come. And we'd been to the zoo, so uh, it seemed reasonable for a tiger to come. I mean, we both thought they were incredibly beautiful. You've got the tiger that came to tea, you've got a very, um, dark book, uh, When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit, says in your own childhood, in your history, do you think that you need to protect children from the realities of the world, shelter them or, or show them? I, I, I didn't uh, think about either of those. I didn't think of it as being dark. Uh, I, I, of course, I loved it. I loved being in Switzerland, especially in Paris, and, and then coming here. I was talking to Tom about writing this book, and he said, uh, yeah, but it can't just be about your happy childhood. Um, Hitler's got to be on the first page. Uh, I got him on the second page. My father had been warned by a stranger to get out of Germany immediately because they were planning to take away his passport. He was afraid that the Nazis would hang on to us to get him back. And this is the moment when we were able to join him in Zurich. Anna saw him first. He was standing by a bookstore. His face was white and his eyes were searching the crowds milling around the train. Papa, she shouted, Papa. He turned and saw them. And then Papa, who was always so dignified, who never did anything in a hurry, suddenly ran towards them. He put his arms around Mama and hugged her. Then he hugged Anna and Max. He hugged and hugged them all and would not let them go. I couldn't see you, said Papa. I was afraid. I know, said Mama. And you grew up in Paris, or you spent some of your childhood in Paris. Yes. As a refugee. My parents were very protective and I never really understood how awful it was for them and, it, and my mother was incredibly unhappy and I didn't notice. She was suicidal at yes, one stage. I only found out about it long after, after her death because there's this archive about my father and they keep finding letters that he has written or people have written to him. She, wanted to kill not only herself, but my brother and me, uh, to protect us, obviously. And uh, I looked at the date, and I thought, well, I just managed to learn to speak French at that time, and uh, it would be very annoying to waste all that. Looking back on your own parents' experiences yes. now, 
with you at the age of 92, do you feel that you're in control of your destiny? I know you've argued quite hard for the right for assisted dying. I have, luckily, no reason to, uh, uh, to end my life. Um, but uh, I think people are coming round to the idea that if life isn't worth living anymore, or if you realized you had Alzheimer's, for instance, that, uh, I mean, it's nobody else's business, is it, what you do at that point? You are so uplifting to talk to and razor sharp. What uplifts you? I don't know. I, I don't feel razor sharp half the time. I can't remember the one word I need. Um, I've been ridiculously lucky. Judith Carr, thank you.